Welcome to Francis Read the Bible. Today I'm moving on to Genesis chapter 23. And Genesis chapter 23 is about the death of Sarah. So Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died in Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham mourned her death. She lived for 37 to 36 to 37 years after giving birth to Isaac. So Abraham, uh, Abraham or Abraham lived around the Hittites. So he went to them and said he needed land to bury his wife. Then they told him, "Ah, oh, we look upon you as a mighty leader. Bury your wife in the best grave that we have. Any of us will be willing to give you a grave so that you can bury her. But Abraham is a very wise man. He didn't just want to bury his wife in anybody's grave. He could have done it for free. You know, but he understood. He understood there's nothing like owing, owning something legally, like being the owner of a property, a land, or something. And he told them, "Okay, if you're willing to let me bury my wife here in your land, please ask Ephron, son of, son of Zohar, to sell me Machpelah Cave, which is near the edge of his field." You know, ask him to sell it to me for full price. It's full price. He didn't want any discount, any reduction of price. He wanted the full amount. And it should be done in their presence so that he can own it as a burial ground. He didn't want to go bury his wife in anybody's cave or just anywhere. Or someone will dash him a piece of land. If you dash something, someone can change their mind tomorrow. Or their descendants change their mind and take it back from you. So... Ephron who was there sitting with the other Hittites at the meeting place at the city gate, you see? Remember Lot was at the city gate when he saw those eight two angels. That's there that men always gather around the city gate. You know? So he answered, bury your wife in it. And Abraham agreed and he weighed out the amounts that Ephron had mentioned in the hearing of the people. He made sure everyone was a witness. It wasn't just an agreement done in secret. But this selling of the land, everyone knew about it. Oh, Abraham the Hebrew bought Ephron's land as around Machpelah, the one in Machpelah cave as a burial. Everybody knew. So for generations to come, everyone knows. As in Abraham is very wise. He understood there are some things that shouldn't be done in secret. You know. And there are some things that should be done in secret. But for this, when it comes to land issues. I think there's a part of my culture in Igbo when you're buying land, you just don't do it. It's really your when it comes to when it has to do with an ancestral land, you don't sell it in secret. You let the homeowner and uh, whatnot know. Oh, you're selling this land to this person's family or something, something like that. Abraham was wise. He understood that verbal agreements can sometimes, you know, people can sometimes deny the verbally made any agreements. And, there's, and then having an agreement where it's just between you and one person without any witness or group of people knowing about it could also be problematic. So Abraham wanted to avoid anything or any problem. Anybody coming to say, oh, I dashed Abraham that land. Oh, we didn't sell it at full price. You know, my grandfather, great grandfather gave you the land. It was for free. He gave it to you at half price. He, he made sure the land was sold to him at the full price and there were loads of witnesses like plenty of people heard and they saw the transaction happen you know it wasn't done in secret it wasn't just between him and Ephron it was the whole practically the whole clan or village the men in the village knew about it so what's that agreement what's that business transaction you know carrying out who knows about it you know Make sure people know. Don't just take people's verbal word for it and stuff like that. People can always change their mind. People are cunning. So that's what Abraham avoided. So that is how the props which had belonged to Ephron at Machpelah or Machpelah, sorry. Machpelah, yeah. Or is it Machpelah? Pela, I don't know. East of Mamre became Abraham's. It included the field, the cave which was in it and all the trees in the field up to the edge of the property. See? This was delineated. This, what was entailed in this purchase was made clear before everyone there. So it was recognized 
as Abraham's property by all the Hittites who were there at the meetings. Not just one, not just two. All the Hittites who were there at the city gates. Then Abraham buried his wife Sarah in that cave in the land of Canaan. So the field which had belonged to the Hittites and the cave in it became the property of Abraham for a burial ground. Everyone knew. And once anyone in the village talks about, oh, that, that land belongs to Abraham, the Hebrew. The Hebrew it belongs to the Hebrew man, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. So you see, for generations to come, generations to come, everyone knows what was sold, what was agreed. They will pass it on from their children to their children's children. Oh, my grandfather told me, my father told me, my my father told my grandfather, who told my great grandfather, oh, my father, <laughs> my great 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 grandfather told my grandfather, go to, as an they just be passing it around among the Hittites, oh, that land belongs to Abraham the Hebrew. He entails these, 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 everyone knew. And everyone will keep knowing that, oh, this is Avram the Hebrews' property for a burial ground. So much wisdom in this. He didn't it in hiding. You know, he could have just sold it to, um, bought it from Ephron without other people in the village reading about it. And then Ephron comes to deny him tomorrow or say, no, it's just the cave or say it's just the this. The trees are not part of it. The land is not part of it. You know, but he made sure everyone heard, saw. And what he was buying, every it was made clear before everyone. Oh, it comprises of this, 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 that. So much wisdom in the Bible, I'm telling you. And as always, this is Francis OKK. I am not a pastor. See you tomorrow and God bless you.